Mel Fisher discovered a million-dollar wreck. Deep under the ocean, where it's so dark that even the sun can't reach, there's an exciting story that calls out to the bravest people. This story happened in 1985 and is about a famous deep-sea explorer named Mel Fisher. In the dark waters near Florida Keys, Mel Fisher found a mysterious shipwreck called the Nuestra Señora de Atocha, which had been lost for a very long time. This amazing discovery revealed a treasure estimated to be worth an astonishing 500 million. It's a story filled with mystery and luck. So without further ado, let's jump right into the story. A long, long time ago, the story of the Nuestra Señora de Atocha began. This ship set off on a dangerous journey from the New World to Spain. It wasn't just carrying valuable things. It also held the hopes and dreams of many people. But in the year 1622, it sailed right into a terrible hurricane. The storm was so fierce that it broke the strong ship into pieces, and sadly, 260 people lost their lives in the rough sea. Only five people managed to survive by holding on. While it had many valuable things, what made this ship special was the incredible cargo hidden inside its underwater resting place. It emboggling 40 tons of gold and silver along with about 70 pounds of Colombian emeralds, some of the rarest and most precious in the world. Even though there was so much wealth inside, the Spanish people who tried to recover it at the time couldn't get to it. The ship's hatches or doors were tightly closed, and they couldn't open them no matter how hard they tried. To make things even worse, another hurricane came and pounded the shipwreck relentlessly until it disappeared completely swallowed up by the incredibly deep ocean. In 1969, more than 300 years after the tragic end of the Nuestra Señora de Atocha, a man named Mel Fisher took on a bold mission to uncover the ship's secrets. Mel Fisher's fascination with underwater diving and treasure hunting began when he was a young boy reading Robert Louis Stevenson's exciting novel, Treasure Island. This early encounter with the world of underwater exploration and hidden riches captivated him, and that fascination stayed with him throughout his life. Before he started searching the ocean's depths, Fisher went to Purdue University, where he learned how to be a hydraulic engineer. When World War II came, he served in the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. After the war, he headed to California in search of wealth and started by taking care of a chicken ranch but it was beneath the surface of the Pacific Ocean where Fisher's true calling was waiting for him. In the lively city of Torrance, California, Mel Fisher started the first dive shop in the state. This ignited his lifelong passion for underwater exploration. His shop, called Mel's Aqua after the war, he headed to California in search of wealth and started by taking care of a chicken ranch. But it was beneath the surface of the Pacific Ocean where Fisher's true calling was waiting for him beach quickly became a gathering place for people who wanted to learn scuba diving and seek underwater treasures. While teaching scuba diving and selling diving gear, Fisher also chased his own dream of finding gold hidden in California's rivers and along its coasts. The big change in Fisher's life happened in 1962 when he moved his family, which included his wife, four sons, and one daughter, to the eastern coast of Florida. It was there, along the shores of Florida, that he began an ambitious mission to discover the sunken treasures of the famous 1715 Spanish plate fleet. Mel Fisher was not your typical treasure hunter. He was a visionary. He made special tools to help him in his never-ending quest. One of his inventions was something he cleverly called mailboxes. These machines funneled the turbulent water created by a boat's engine into the sandy ocean floor, uncovering valuable treasures hidden beneath the seabed. This innovation made a huge difference. Mel Fisher's special equipment led to incredible discoveries, including more than 1,000 gold coins. However, the ultimate treasure he was after remained hidden. In 1969, Fisher's life took a big turn when he learned about the Nuestra Señora de Atocha. After that, his main goal became finding this famous shipwreck, and he was completely devoted to it, guided by his steadfast motto, Today's the day. What he didn't know was that the relentless pursuit of the Atocha would occupy the next 16 and a half years of his life. The journey was filled with dangers and heartaches. In 1973 and then again in 1975, Fisher's oldest son, Dirk, 
who was following in his father's footsteps, made significant discoveries, finding three silver bars and five bronze cannons from the Atoka. In 1980, Mel Fisher's unwavering determination paid off when he discovered the wreck of the Santa Margarita. This discovery brought up more than 20 million worth of gold and other valuable items. But the biggest prize of all, the Atoka, still remained just out of reach. Then, on a significant day, July 20th, 1985, one of Fisher's sons, Kane, sent a radio message that changed everything. Stop using the maps. We found the main treasure. The Atocha had been located. Fisher and his team embarked on a massive effort, bringing up an incredible 40 tons of gold and silver, 114,000 dogs, pieces of eight, old silver coins, gold coins, $1,000 silver bars, gold and silver artifacts, and 71 pounds of Colombian emeralds. Kane Fisher and his team found the Atosha treasure by using a combination of sophisticated technology and old-fashioned detective work. Kane Fisher was a skilled diver and underwater archaeologist, and he used the most advanced technology available at the time to search for the Atocha. This included side-scanning sonar, which created detailed images of the ocean floor, and a high-speed magnetometer, which detected ferrous metals. Kane Fisher also studied historical records and consulted with experts to learn more about the Atocha and its sinking. He used this information to narrow down his search area and focus on the most likely places where the ship might be located. Kane Fisher and his team were searching an area about 35 miles southwest of Key West, Florida. They were using side-scanning sonar to scan the ocean floor when they detected a large anomaly. Kane Fisher and his team investigated the anomaly and found a scattering of gold coins and silver artifacts. They realized that they had found the Atosha Trishur. The sheer size of the Trishur was astonishing and worth a mind-boggling $500 million. Silver coins, 433 silver bars, 111 gold bars, and in the stern castle where the captain's cabin was, 35 boxes filled with gems and jeweler. However, the ship's inventory still held secrets, hiding 162 copper ingots, 14 bronze cannons, $125,000 we. These emeralds, which came from Colombia's famous Muzo mine, were considered the best in the world, while the gold and silver made Fisher, his team, and investors very wealthy. The historical artifacts were what really made the world's heritage more valuable. Uncommon navigation tools and ceramic containers from the 17th century, retrieved from the depths of the ocean, gave us a peek into a distant era. Among the interesting things they found were bizarre stones, which were about the size of an egg. These stones came from the stomachs of animals like llamas, alpacas, deer, and sheep. In the 17th century, people believed that if you put these stones in a cup of liquid, it would purify the liquid and remove any toxins or poisons. Rich and powerful people in that time were really interested in these stones. Mel Fisher became famous for finding the treasure from the Atosha shipwreck. He even appeared on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, wearing one of the huge gold chains they found on the Atosha. But this new fame caused some problems. The state of Florida said they had a right to 25% of the treasure. Fisher, known for never giving up, didn't agree and took the state of Florida to court. This legal battle went on for eight long years. The most important moment in this legal fight happened on July 1st, 1982, when the U.S. Supreme Court said Fisher was right and that he owned all the treasure from the Atocha. It was a big win, but it came after a tough and never give up fight. Today, many of the valuable things they found on the Atocha are in the Mel Fisher Maritime Museum in Key West, Florida. In 1987, the U.S. Congress passed the Abandoned Shipwreck Act, a law that says states have rights to shipwrecks found within three miles of their coasts. This shows how important Fisher's discoveries still are today. Mel Fisher's life came to an end on December 19, 1998, but his legacy lives on through the Mel Fisher Center, Inc. This organization takes care of the treasures found during his incredible underwater adventures. Even after Mel Fisher passed away, the ocean still gave up its secrets. In June 2011, his team found an emerald ring, two silver spoons, and other valuable things. The ring alone was worth $500,000, reminding us of the incredible treasures hidden under the sea. In 2014, the Nuestra Señora de Atocha made history 
by becoming the most valuable shipwreck ever found and earning a place in the Guinness Book of World Records. Mel Fisher's determination and bravery show us that the best treasures are often hidden beneath the surface, waiting to be discovered. If you enjoyed this journey into Mel Fisher's world, please like, share, and subscribe for more amazing stories from the mysterious depths of our world. Thanks for joining us, and until next time, keep exploring, keep dreaming, and keep uncovering the secrets of our world's hidden treasures.